New discoveries in the Grand Canyon changed the focus of the geological study of our planet 500 million years ago. The scope of the work that already breaks several paradigms. The history of the Earth, dominated for much of its first 4,600 million years by single-celled life, was turned upside down approximately 500 million years ago with the so-called Cambrian Explosion. In this period, an impressive diversity of life forms was recorded in rocks that hold remains of species that evolved into today's animals, including humans. The Cambrian rocks of the Grand Canyon have been a key resource for investigating this epoch and are now allowing for a profound revision of the classic model of marine stratigraphy. A team of scientists from several universities, led by Carol Deller, a professor at Utah State University, and the paleontologist at the University of New Mexico, UNM, Fred Sundberg, has analyzed the Grand Canyon Fool Group, a set of rocks that contains records of the Cambrian explosion. This study proposes a more complex and detailed sedimentation model than the one used so far. The Grand Canyon is home to a treasure trove of sedimentary layers and fossils that chronicle the Cambrian explosion about 500 million years ago, when the first animals with hard shells proliferated rapidly and sea levels rose to envelop the continents with emerging marine life, Deller explained. This study challenges the model of marine transgression developed five decades ago by geologist Eddie McKee, a classic scheme that suggests that the gradual rise of the seas over the continents favored the deposition of marine sediments and allowed a gradual evolution of ecosystems. Now, scientists are proposing a more nuanced approach. According to Carl Karlstrom, a professor at UNM, the Tonto Group's new sedimentation model reveals a mixture of marine and non-marine environments, ruptures, or unconformities when sediment was not deposited, and a much faster rate of evolution. This means that, unlike McKee's model, sediment deposition conditions could vary dramatically, which would have accelerated evolutionary processes. For the scientists behind this study, one of the main contributions of this research is to show the evolution of scientific knowledge and new ways of approaching the study of geology. Our findings remind us that science is a process, said James Hagedorn of the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. For Hagedorn, the geology of the Grand Canyon connects people to this science, in a very personal way, as it is one of the most iconic and recognizable natural places in the world. A key aspect of this research has been the use of innovative dating methods to estimate the rate at which species diversified in the Cambrian period. According to Mark Schmitz of Boise State University, our new tandem UPB dating methods are fine-tuning the precise ages for each layer in the succession and for transitions between trilobite biozones. Thanks to these advanced techniques, they have discovered that some species of trilobites, primitive marine animals, emerged and became extinct in less than a million years, a surprising speed by evolutionary standards. The UPB technique involves the analysis of zircon crystals, a tiny mineral trapped in sedimentary rocks, which is crushed and examined in the laboratory. Sedimentary rocks are difficult to date, explained Lori Crossy, a professor at UNM, since the fossils they contain and the sediments in which they are found must be younger than the most recent grain. By combining dates of different grains, researchers can pinpoint the age of each stratum more accurately. Understanding the Cambrian Environment The study also offers a window into environmental conditions during the Cambrian, when the climate was much warmer and the planet was ice-free. From the 500-meter-thick strata of the Tonto Group, we are learning about sea level rise and the effects of catastrophic tropical storms, probably more powerful than today's devastating hurricanes, Deller said. In this ancient world, without land plants, the high seas covered extensive continental areas, allowing the deposit of sediments where marine life could expand rapidly. In addition to advances in research, this study has the potential to change the way geology is taught to students, as McKee's model has been widely adopted in universities around the world. The proposed new model not only provides a deeper understanding of the Cambrian, but also represents an educational opportunity for future geologists to learn to view Earth's geologic history as a dynamic, interconnected process, rather than a uniform, gradual one. As Deller said, 
the findings allow both students and researchers to reach a deeper understanding of the Cambrian explosion. With its extensive layers and fossil records, the Tonto group remains an unrivaled reference for studying the Cambrian. According to Carl Strong, this geological formation remains one of the most important Cambrian-type sections in the world due to its full exposure. For researchers, the breadth and detail of these sedimentary deposits allow for more accurate reconstruction of past ecosystems and offer an invaluable resource for evolutionary and geology studies. Research on the Grand Canyon Group not only redefines the understanding of a key period in the history of life on Earth, but also reminds us of the importance of further exploration with modern methods and multidisciplinary approaches. This teamwork demonstrates how science can reinterpret the past and provide a richer understanding of the natural world around us.